Well, hello there, Tankers of the Blitz universe. I'm Flossie, and do you want to spend all of your life savings and more on a new Tier 9 Heavy? Well, this is your chance to do so, as this is the newest version of the Lorraine 50 ton that is going to be coming out tomorrow or I guess today as of you guys watching this video but this is the project KPZ 07 PE and what I mean by it's the next Lorraine 50 ton its drop chance is like 0.05 from what I am hearing if it is in these mystery crates that are being released tomorrow or today uh yeah good luck getting this thing unless you want to open 5,000 crates so in today's video, I'll be showcasing this tank's stats and its ability on the battlefield for any of you guys who want to see how it's going to be played. Breaking on into the stats of this tank. It deals 380 damage on its standard shells, 320 on the heat, and 480 on its HE. So not the highest alpha damage for a tier 9 heavy, but it's also pretty solid for what it has going for it. And your penetration is also pretty good. 263 standard. Uh, APCR is obviously not great. I hate APCR standard. But 373 heat pen makes up for that. That is absolutely insane. No problems there. And 70 HE pen is enough to deal the damages. In terms of your gun depression, you have 8 degrees, which makes this tank fairly flexible. And your DPM of 2269 is sort of mid, mid of the range in terms of tier 9 heavies. Your aim time of 2.7 seconds and your dispersion of 0.326 is also pretty solid. You're not going to have too much trouble with the gun trolling you, which is very nice. In terms of your mobility, you go 42 forward and 18 in reverse with a power to weight of 15.7. And you have very good hull traverse rate. So this tank overall in terms of its mobility is pretty good, especially that reverse speed at going 18. Now, in terms of the armor profile, you will see here the main armor, especially on the front of the turret, is going to be pretty solid. 170 base is definitely enough to get some bounces, uh, but of course you do have to watch out for that hatch on the roof, and of course the normal weak spots like your lower plate. Now, something interesting about this tank that I will note before we get into the live battles is improved suspension. Yes, instead of this tank having camo net as its second option, uh, for the specialization tab, you get improved suspension, which is something that the VK72 also has. And that is what I recommend you guys use instead of view range. Because this is a heavy, you're not going to be spotting anyone for yourself 95% of the time. So getting the extra mobility um, in terms of its average speed, hull turn rate, which goes up by quite a bit, as well as its terrain resistance when going off road. Uh, will be more beneficial, again, than using optics. So I do recommend you guys put this on if you, for whatever reason, get super lucky and actually get this vehicle. However, as of most of you probably will not get that thing, then obviously it's not going to matter. But let's get into some live battles to showcase to you what this tank is and is not capable of. Alrighty, new bay it is for battle number one. A pretty okay map for a tank like this, especially because this tank kind of relies on its turret armor, especially, uh, to get bounces. Now again, the turret armor is not exactly the strongest in the world, and of course if you do load your premium ammo, you will be able to pen it in certain spots, but overall I think this tank, especially because it's new, um, a lot of people are going to struggle to pen it. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to be playing it sort of aggressive, and especially because um, overall, this thing does play like the tank that is right in front of me, the KPZ-70, just without the alpha damage. Um, you can get away with certain uh, plays that might be sus in other vehicles. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with this KPZ as much as I can, because of course your lower alpha damage is going to allow you to pump out more shells than a tank like the KPZ. So we're going to try and do that as best we can here, and we see the Progetto right in front of us here. I'm going to load an HE shell and oof, 468, and bro is already dead. Um, yeah, having that HE alpha is quite solid, and 70 HE pen is also not bad, like I said. So you're able to get out some HE shells on medium tanks, especially at tier 8. But that is not what we're focusing on anymore. We see there is an E75 and a VK4502B camping in spawn, and the T55A. Okay, so their whole team is playing like an EU battle. Incredible stuff right here. Let's get another shell into the VK, and you can see the accuracy on this tank is pretty solid. Like I said, you are not going to have too much trouble uh, when it comes to the gun's accuracy, and uh, unfortunately that low rolled, but we still penned him in the lower plate again. 
And you can see here, um, these players probably will not be able to pen me here because I am in a somewhat hull downy position here. And having 8 degrees of gun depression really helps you out in these kind of situations here. However, their team is not that great, so I'm not exactly too worried about uh, making an aggressive play here. And I'm going to do so. So I'm going to start pushing towards the VK and the E75 to help our T92 get these guys out of the game of fast so there we go let's pick up the kill on the vk and now i will get hopefully a shell or two into this e75 you can see here um although we don't have the most dpm in the world it's still pretty solid like we're getting out a lot of damage right now we're at 3k already and this battle being a steamroll um 3k is actually pretty solid so there we go we do pick up the kill on that e75 and there are still two tanks left so i will be making my way towards those two players using my nice mobility to get there as soon as i can and i mean you can see here like the power to wait even when going up a hill obviously this is hard terrain but even so uh the power to wait is pretty solid here and we're able to get up to our top speed um pretty quickly here so since I am full HP, obviously using my HP is not an issue at all. We're going to get a nice shell into that object right there. And we're going to give him a little ram because this tank, of course, weighs a decent amount for what it is. And uh, so, yeah, I shouldn't have too much trouble ramming him for some damage. And there we go. We do pick up the kill on that object. And I'm hoping I can get one more shell out. Oh, my God. I almost got blocked by that T-34 too. But I didn't. And there you go. Game number one was a success. Four kills and 4,000 damage. I wonder if I aced the thing with that. Probably because the tank is technically not out yet. So, let's see here. What did we do? Oh, 4,100 damage, I guess, with the ram. And there we go. We do ace the tank for the first battle. So, there you go. Pretty solid result for that game. And thank you for all of the pop-ups, Wargaming. But let's get into game number two here. Alrighty, we're gonna try this again. My throat was actually just dying there for a couple minutes. So, uh, yeah, now we're gonna get into game number two, and we are on Dead Rail, which is a map I absolutely hate. However, in this tank, it shouldn't be too, too bad. I'm gonna go mid because, of course, using eight degrees of gun depression and good turret armor is gonna help me out here. However, not if my whole team decides to go the other side of the map here. Uh, this tank is strong, but without team support, you're still going to get killed off pretty quickly. However, I'm going to be honest, I, I, I'm gonna still going to go mid. I'm still going to go mid. We'll, we'll see what happens here, but I kind of think that their team uh, won't be able to do too much to me. Okay, what am I looking at, bro? Wait a minute, dude. Is my whole team seriously camping in this back corner? I'm, I'm sorry, what? Bruh. See, like, I'm supposed to be reviewing this tank, but, like, w what? All six of my, oh, sorry, five of my players are camping in that corner, and one of them is camping in a TNH, which is a heavy tank, of course, in the other corner, bro. What am I looking at right now? Okay, well, I just blocked 930 damage right there. Good thing I'm sitting hull down, and the only player that was able to pen me was that silly medium tank, so not too concerned about that. Um, I kind of feel like I just wasted my adrenaline for no reason, though. But, anyways, you can see here, on a ridgeline like this, this tank will be pretty solid, especially with the gun depression carry. Let's see if we can hit that WT again. Nice, we hit him for a okay roll, especially considering he had spall liner on. But, because this tank has a lot of turret armor, I'm not too worried about this guy, and uh, I'm pretty comfortable sitting hull down right here. So... Oh my god, bro. Both teams are just camping. Well, I've already blocked 2,100 damage. I don't know what this guy is doing at all. Uh, this is the most brain-dead team and enemy team I've seen in a while. But we're not going to let that screw our game over. We're just going to farm these apes. Here we go. And I'm just going to wait for a little bit more gun depression there. There we go. M6 did get shot now. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see, like, putting my tank in mid was an okay play, simply because their team did absolutely nothing to counter me. And, uh, this M6 is... I don't know what he's doing. But, anyways, I mean, you guys can see. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this camo here while my gun's reloading. I think it's pretty solid, honestly. I'd give the camo a solid, like, 7 out of 10 for looks. I actually like the color combo it has, and I like the way the, um, like, animated, like, they almost look like fish scale things move around. 
Um, I also like the fact that there's like a little question mark, like hologram thing on it. I think those are kind of cool. I mean, it's it's called the mystery, so it's supposed to be a mystery box, like looking crate, I guess. Um, which again is pretty cool. But uh, anyways, back to the game here. We are gonna get yoloed by an M46 Patton here, which I'm not exactly too worried about here. So I'm just gonna yolo him back. Hello, Patton. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not yoloing him back anymore. He's a waffle friend now. I'm I'm good, bro. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. You guys can YOLO me all you want, bro. I'm just gonna back up here. Let's see if we can get into a more hull downy position. Uh, I don't know what bro is doing in his waffle, I'm gonna be honest. But he's not running spall, so thank you very much for the 500 plus roll right there. Really appreciate that. And this pattern is going to just sit there. Okay, well, thank you for the free damage there. Holy cow, guys. Uh, both of these teams, my team and the enemy team, were absolute brain rot teams, bro. Like, look at this. Like, what am I looking at? Also, 600 damage. I'm pretty sure that was a max roll, but uh, holy cow, bro. What? What was this team, bro? 5,200 damage. I don't know what to say. That was very interesting. <laughs> but there you guys have it. Uh, average NA team moment and uh, average new premium tank moment, I guess. There we go. Block 2500 and we aced our second battle in this thing as well. Uh, very impressive, both of those teams. I still can't get over that. But anyways, the tank did well. You can see my accuracy did well in those battles. The nice HE allowed me to get out some juicer shells. And overall, the armor worked all right. So, let's see if we can keep this up in our third and final battle here in the project. And let's get into game number three. I had another coughing fit. And now I'm going to open up a pack of Smarties, which are these things in Canada. Pretty sure these things are called something else in America. But anyways, mm, down the hatch they go. And uh, we're on Middleburg for our third and final battle of the video. So I'm going to go up. We are against tier 10s this time, so I guess this will be a good showcase to see how the armor performs against higher tiered opponents. And I was going to go up, but then I saw 57 Heavy and E5 and BZ and probably the 268 going town. So it's no longer going to look like a good idea to me. So here we go. Get an on-the-move shot into the 57 Heavy. And bro just nukes me. Okay, wow. We love intra-clip boost on the 57 Heavy, you guys. Incredible stuff. To be honest... Sorry, guys. I'm chewing a little bit here. To be honest, I think our team should win medium flank pretty easily. So, at this point, it's a matter of holding off these heavies and making sure they cannot push this side of the map here. So, um, I'm probably just going to hold this position here. I feel like there's zero point in me moving up when that probably is going to equal me getting YOLO'd and dying. So, let's get a shell into that 57 Heavy. I'm just going to play it patient, and that's something you want to do in a tank with lower alpha like this, is uh, people aren't going to be as scared of you as, let's say, a tank like the uh, KPZ-70. So, you really do have to be careful um, with especially tanks like that Waffle. Oh, there we go. Bro, is that the same Waffle player, dude? Bro is also not running Spall. What's up with Waffles not running Spall today? Interesting. Well, Sheridan drives into a wall. Absolute big brain play right there. Allowing us to get a free shell into his vehicle here. And... Hmm. I mean, it's kind of over, right? So I'm just going to YOLO this uh, 50 TP Proto right here. There we go. 376 roll. Sheridan is still not dead somehow. Incredible stuff. But I think I'm going to ignore the... Actually, you know what? No, no, no. We're going to shoot this 57 maybe. There we go. We got one shell into him. And now I'm going to hopefully get one more into the waffle before he dies here. Not a crazy game, but it was a complete steamroll. So let's see here. Oof. 634 roll right into his tank Rooney. And maybe I can even ram him. Nah. I mean, we still did 2800, so... I'll take it, considering that was pretty much a steamroll game. Um, their team just did not push on either side of the map, and they lost for it. But, I mean, you can see there, like, obviously against Tier 10s, especially the 57 Heavy that has great pen, uh, my tank's armor on flat ground will not really hold up too well. But we still did okay damage using our good accuracy and decent DPM to help us out there. So, 
Is this tank good? Yes, it is. Is this tank worth five trillion dollars? No, it's not. So, honestly, guys, uh, this is just going to be another one of those super rare tanks that you will only see a couple of times in all of your Blitz battles. So, honestly, it's a pretty cool looking tank. I do like the look of it. I do like how it plays. But, again, do not buy this thing. It's going to be so very expensive. Um, I kind of wish, there's a piece of me that wishes I am wrong about what it's going to be or how expensive it's going to be. But I'm 95% sure it's going to be out of the reach of 99% of Blitz players. But, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this review regardless. And for any of you out there who are not yet subscribed to my channel, I highly recommend you do so as it's a fantastic way to support content like this and stay up to date when I post videos almost daily. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.